Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on anti-cancer chemotherapy. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the use of the nitrosourea drugs uh, in uh, treating cancer. Okay, so nitrosoureas. And these are, again, uh, drugs that will come under the uh, larger uh, category of uh, alkylating agents, just like the nitrogen mustards are alkylating agents. Uh, the nitrosoureas are also alkylating agents which will alkylate DNA. But as we'll also see, the nitrosoureas uh, also carbamoylate proteins, so they attack cells in uh, more ways than the uh, nitrogen mustard attack cells. So they're slightly more deadly in some ways. Right, okay, so uh, the structure then for this video, we're firstly going to look at some examples of nitrosoureas. So we'll have four examples of drugs which are uh, nitrosoureas. We'll then look at the mechanism uh, by which they um, alkylate DNA and carbamoylate proteins. And we'll then talk about how this is going to um, lead to um, either the prevention of the tumour getting any bigger, or maybe, hopefully, the actual death of the tumour cells. Okay, so we'll start with the most important nitrosourea, uh, the one which really they're all based on, which is a drug known as carmustine. Okay, so we'll start with carmustine, and all of the nitrosoureas, in fact, actually not all of them, the final one I'm going to show you uh, isn't, but most of the nitrosoureas have mustine on the end of their name like that. Okay, right, so we'll start with carmustine. Okay, so the carmustine, the main structure, which is why it's called a nitrosourea, so I suppose I should really just remind you of the structure of urea so that you can understand why these are called nitrosoureas. So the structure of urea is that you have a carbonyl group right in the center, and then you have two amino groups coming off the uh, carbonyl group, so this is the that structure of urea, okay? And these are going to be nitrosoureas because they're going to be based on urea, uh, but they're also going to have a nitro group of one of these nitrogens, and you'll see what I mean in a moment. So here we have this carbonyl group with two nitrogens off it, and now off this nitrogen here, what you're going to have is another nitrogen with a double bond to an oxygen, and this, this structure here, this is the nitro group. So this is what the nitro in nitrosoureas means, so this is a nitro group here. Okay, right, this nitrogen will have a hydrogen off it, and then both of them will also have chloroethyl groups off them, just like we saw in the nitrogen mustards where the chloroethyl group was utterly essential for the function. Okay, so this suggests that maybe they're going to act in a similar way to uh, nitrogen mustards, but it's not as similar. You might think, oh great, this is going to be the exact same mechanism now. It's just going to go through that ammonium ion, carbonium ion, alkylate the DNA cycle twice, and then it will form interstrand crosslinks. No, it's going to go through a slightly different reaction. So this is the structure of the nitrosourea uh, carmustine. Okay, so now let's look at the next one which is a drug known as lomustine, another very famous uh, anti-cancer -chemo uh, anti chemotherapy agent, lomustine. Okay, so again, what it's going to have is this central uh, nitrosourea portion. So here's the carbonyl group. Here's the first amino group. Here's the second amino group with the nitro group coming off it. And then off this amino group here, you then have the chloroethyl group here. Okay, so this is the ethyl group. And then here's the chloride off there. Well, the chlorine atom. Okay, and then also off this side, what you have is a six-membered hydrocarbon ring. And this is often drawn in its skeletal structure just to make the structure look simpler. Okay, so what this means is you have a carbon here, a carbon here, a carbon here, carbon here, a carbon here, and a carbon here. So a six-membered carbon ring, where all of the bonds of the carbon between the carbons in this ring are single bonds, and that means that all of these other hydrogens here, they're going to have to have 
two bond, two hydrogens coming off them. At least these five are here. This one has got three bonds, so it will only need one hydrogen. But it's implicitly assumed that where there are missing bonds, that just means hydrogens coming off. So this is the structure of lomustine. Okay, so the next drug we'll look at is just a modification of lomustine. The next drug is a drug known as sumustine. And sumustine is basically the exact same structure as lomustine, except that we add one methyl group on, onto it. So again, let's remind ourselves of the structure of lomustine. So um, here is this nitrosourea group. So the carbonyl group with these two amino groups coming off it. And then one of these amino groups has this nitro group coming off down here. And then this one with the nitro group coming off it, this will have a chloroethyl group here. So this is the chloroethyl. So here's the ethyl, and then we've got the chlorine atom right at the end. And then off this other amino group, you then have the six-membered hydrocarbon ring here, the cyclohexane ring, and that makes a sumastine. Okay, and now we've got a totally different one now, which isn't actually going to have this chloroethyl group on it. Okay, and this next drug is a drug known as streptozotocin. Streptozotocin. Okay. All right, so streptozotocin. So the structure of streptozotocin, it's still a nitrosourea, so it still has this carbonyl group at the center with this amino group here with the hydrogen, and then the other amino group with a nitro group coming off here. Okay, so there's that one. And then off this side now, it doesn't have the chloroethyl group anymore. Instead, it has a methyl group coming off here. Okay, and then on this side, Instead, it now has, it still has this cyclohexane, but it's going to have, well, it's not a cyclohexane anymore. It's nearly cyclohexane, but instead it has an oxygen there. Okay, so I'll still draw the skeletal structure here. So it's got this six-membered ring with an oxygen down here, and now it's got four alcohol groups coming off, and it becomes important as to how these are oriented. So I will draw this out. So this arrow that sort of gets thicker towards the end this bond that gets thicker towards the end, uh, this means it's coming out of the page at us. And these dashed lines like this denote a bond that's going into the page, okay? So this one's coming out at us, this one's going in. Then you've got another one that's coming out here. Again, this is important because all of these carbons will also have a hydrogen attached. So in this case, the alcohol group is going into the page and the hydrogen is coming out of the page. In this case, the alcohol group is coming out of the page and the hydrogen is going into the page. So again, here, on this carbon, the alcohol group is coming out of the page and the hydrogen is going into the page. So this is just denoting which optical isomer of this molecule it is. And finally, the alcohol group down here is also coming out of the page at us, and the hydrogen that will come off this carbon is going into the page. Now you might think, oh gosh, how trivial, uh, but it's not. Optical isomerism is actually very important in biochemistry because enzymes generally only recognize a certain stereo, well, a certain optical isomer, basically. Um, they are optical isomer specific. So it is important that these that this is the specific isomer which is used as an um, anti-cancer chemotherapeutic. Okay, so if you, and basically you can't just alter the, um, the orientate, you can't alter whether the hydroxyl or the hydrogen is coming out of the page, not without doing a chemical reaction. So these orientations relative to one another are fixed. So this is a specific optical isomer and it is important basically. Okay, so these are the um, four examples of nitrosoureas, carmustine, lomustine, sumustine, and streptozotocin. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll turn our attention to their mechanism of action.